In this video, we're going over the truth about losing 7 pounds in 36 hours so you can better understand what's happening with this weight loss. And we're starting right now. What is up, Next Level Nation? Johnny F here with Next Level Warrior, the channel where we help you level up your life. If this is your first time here and you're interested in becoming your next level self, then start now by clicking that subscribe button and ringing the bell notification to catch my videos posted every week. Good morning, guys. It is 10 a.m. now on Tuesday, and it's officially been 36 hours since my last meal on Sunday night, when I weighed this much. And, as you can see, getting on the scale now, we are officially down 7 pounds since then. But what does this mean? How did I do it? And where did all that weight go? I'm going to be answering these questions and more to help you better understand the truth about drastic weight loss in such a short period of time. So stay tuned. Let's talk about the pink elephant in the room. The difference between fat loss and weight loss. As these get misconstrued constantly, especially in the marketing world of the machine that calls itself the fitness industry. This is an important thing to understand because these 7 pounds that I lost were mostly water and glycogen. When it comes to actual fat loss, at most, there's probably a quarter to a third of a pound of fat burned in these 36 hours. You see, in order to create a deficit large enough to lose 7 pounds of fat in 36 hours, you would need to do a completely inhuman amount of exercise to burn that off. And yes, I've actually done some rough calculations to figure this out, but I'm definitely not going there today. Unless of course you're into that sort of thing. Comment below. Now let's get to the meat of this video, starting with how I did it. So there are a few things that I did in order to drop this amount of weight. And the first one is fasting, of course. I've been doing intermittent fasting for over five years now, starting with 16 hour windows and eventually shifting into longer 20 to 22 hour daily fasts, also known as the warrior diet. This essentially means that I have a daily two to four hour window of time where I eat all my calories for the day. And just to clarify, this is not why the channel is called Next Level Warrior. As I quickly adapted to these longer daily fasting windows, I experimented with and eventually got over the misconceptions that many of us have when it comes to hunger, especially when it comes to training in a fasted state. Now this might seem like I'm going off topic, but stay with me here. The first part of the how is simply fasting for the 36 hour period. To me, this means absolutely zero intake of anything that would trigger an insulin response in my body. There is much debate and a variety of evidence as to what can set off an insulin response, which would temporarily halt certain fasting benefits. One of the biggest being when exceeding 20 plus hours of fasting, autophagy. But that's a whole other video. So I simply drank plenty of water, coffee in the earlier part of my day, and my apple cider vinegar fasting drink to help with replenishing minerals while suppressing hunger. The how, part two. This ACV drink recipe is a major player in the how, as it's super high in potassium. When you're fasting, you're not taking in any food. Thus, we aren't taking in any sodium, both from what's in our food and the salt we normally add to it. So when your potassium levels increase, while sodium is super low, this pushes out a substantial amount of water weight from your body, especially a lot of water held below the skin and fat that makes us feel bloated at times. Sodium in particular is a big catalyst for water absorption. To explain this, have you ever noticed how thirsty you get in the hours that follow a really salty meal? Basically, your body is asking for water to utilize the sodium and minerals to hydrate your cells. If you've ever gone overboard at a sushi restaurant on the soy sauce, then you know exactly what I mean. That terrible feeling of being so thirsty, but so full from drinking water, completely incapable of quenching your thirst. Carbohydrates have a similar effect, but in a different way. Basically, every gram of carbs attaches with it two to three, sometimes four grams of water. This is the hydrate part of carbohydrates in action. Eventually, this is stored in the liver and loaded up in the muscles as glycogen for later energy use. I'm sure you've noticed that both when your salt and carb intakes increase drastically, such as during a Christmas dinner or a Thanksgiving feast, your weight can go up by easily 5 pounds or more the next day. This is almost entirely due to the increase of sodium and carbohydrates those days, as they will cause you to store that much more water. If you know what I'm talking about, hit that like button. Come on, you know you want to. 
This also ties into a big misconception that I hear from my clients where they're worried that they actually gain five pounds of fat in a day. But the reality is that five pounds of fat would equate to roughly a 17,000 calorie surplus. Now, I don't doubt that some people are capable of consuming that amount of food in a day, but that said, it shouldn't be a surprise as to the sheer amount of weight gain that would result. Anyways, let's take this into understanding by putting it all together. When you fast for an entire day or longer, you're going a whole day without consuming carbohydrates and sodium from food. Though I do suggest adding some salt to your water or fasting drink. This results in triggering your body to use up its glycogen stores in your liver and muscles, resulting in weight loss, plus the lack of water that your body won't be soaking up from not having consumed sodium from your food. But here's the kicker. When your sodium levels are down and you're still taking in potassium, this pushes out that much more water weight from your body, especially if you drink a larger amount of fluids during this fasting time. And now for part three, fasted training and increased fluid intake. In order to deplete your glycogen stores, you need to expend energy. As this is the initial fuel that your body wants to use, utilizing fat as a fuel is typically only in times that your body thinks it needs to tap into it for survival, which of course we can trigger in a calorie deficit and when adapting to intermittent fasting, but also in a ketogenic diet where you'll barely be producing any glycogen with eating such little carbohydrates. I personally accelerate this glycogen depletion by training in a fasted state. This past Monday was 20 minutes of skipping rope split into three sets combined with my back and shoulder lifting routine. Now in terms of fluids, during the first 24 hours, I'm having one to two liters of straight up water, two of my apple cider vinegar fasting drinks, which are about a liter each, two cups of coffee, and a half liter of herbal tea before bed. How much is that? A lot. And surprisingly, this creates a rinsing effect where my body is both replenishing and pushing out water from the sodium and potassium balancing act. Essentially, moving out any bloating that might have been occurring from water retention in the first place. Now, I used to get excited when I first started experimenting and seeing the numbers on the scale drop so drastically during these longer fasts. But these thoughts are what used to get me into trouble. That sort of trouble from the negative mindset we can get into seeing the scale numbers moving up so quickly. But once you understand that the body is constantly trying to balance fluids and energy that make up for this majority of weight fluctuation, then this can help you to see that there's a bigger picture beyond that of the numbers on the scale. I simply use the scale as a means of data combined with the other things I'm doing in my routine to make the best decisions I can for the goals I'm aiming for. And this is gonna be different for all of us while at the same time changing as we do. So go ahead and experiment, learn, be gentle with yourself and do your best not to fall into this negative gap that we can get stuck in when trying to achieve certain health or physique goals. I've certainly fallen in there too many times. Make sure to share this video with anyone who's experienced the mind games that can happen with weight loss. Comment below with your thoughts and questions, hit the like button if this gave you good information, and make sure to subscribe to join the Next Level community and catch my videos posted every week. I'll see you in the next one. If you know what I'm talking about, hit the like button. You know you want to. Come on.